Hello YouTube, this is Daniel here from Tech Tutorials 101, back here with another video. Got something slightly different for you here today. Um, so as you may have seen in one of my previous videos, I have recently started um, developing Alexa skills. Um, I come from a sysadmin background with very little coding experience, um, apart from writing scripts in PowerShell uh, and also Bash. Um, so very little coding experience. Um, I've recently started working on Alexa skills using Node.js as as a bit of a hobby on the side, just keep me busy in these um, in these tough times. So I just wanted to show you some of the um, tutorials that have helped me, and also the applications that I've built and upcoming applications and plans for this hobby. So first off, um, we have the conversation application, um, which will give you a random list of um, compliments which is the first program, um, first Alexa skill I built. Um, I followed this tutorial here. So how to program a conversation with Alexa using Python and, and Lambda. Um, really good tutorial if you just want to get a, um, a, a skill up and running, um, essentially just returning li lines of text um, as compliments to the user. And it's also a part two to this where um, Keith goes into a lot of debugging um, yeah, again, really, really good video. Would re definitely recommend. So the ne the next skill which I which I was working on um, was the bullfrog, and this was essentially a app for a pub which would return the prices of different beer um, to customers, and that was from this video here. Uh, build an Alexa skill in twenty minutes using Node.js. Um, I actually couldn't get this to work in the end. Um, I think I think it's due to the date of the video. Um, there are a lot of things in, in here which may be out of date, um, as AWS and Alexa has been updated a lot since this video. But I would still I would still go for it because it it gets you creating slots and using um using utterances and use, using a lot more um functions within within Lambda and and within Alexa. Um, so the next next application which i which i created um a bit more bit more coding involved in this one um so with coin test essentially this will go off and get the price of bitcoin um so only one coin this was pretty much my first app which i um worked on worked on myself um through this youtube channel here this has been one of the greatest resources um, for Alexa and, and Node.js information. So that's the Dabble Lab. I'll put them in, in the description. He has great videos on setting up your coding environment, um, bu building apps using DB, using APIs, um, loads and loads of great tutorials on here. Um, he also has his own website where he hosts skill, skill templates on, so you can go and download a template for using DB and then refactor it to your own application. So definitely check this out. I'll put the links in, in the description. So if we come in here to test, I'm just gonna mute this because it can be quite loud. Okay, so it's just giving a, a boilerplate response there. So please give me the price. Okay, so that's returning the price of Bitcoin. Um, I didn't actually add in coin slots or, or any slots into this um, application. So I, so I just add in, please give me the price and then it returns the price here. So if we go into the Lambda code for this application, so coin price, that's just loading the uh, index. So I've been using the, um, the GDAX API for this to go and get the price. So declaring it up here, and also declaring the function to get prices. 
so cr created the function um, public client dot get product ticker and now I've just placed the ticker of BTC USD in there and then I've got the request handler down here where, which actually launches that function and then outputs the price so so we've got an async function here and then we've declared a variable bit price and then that's awaiting the, the get quote um, function which is up above and then it just paste, puts it into a variable um, called bit price and then it just speaks that out to the user um, so that was a good little program for me to create and get started on I then after that I started working um, in Visual Studio Code building out um, my applications in here rather than just typing them into into just a normal text editor also using the terminal and using ask um, CLI so deploying my applications via CLI and also using AWS CLI as well and that has made the deployment process much easier and the entire build press really um, just just being able to create a directory here and then type in ask, ask new and it'll go off and it'll create all the necessary files for the, my lambda function and my skill and then just add, just add them up here in the text in the text editor and then you can just type in ask deploy and that will go off and then deploy my application to lambda and also the the alexa skill console as well really really reduces um, the amount of time it takes to get your application up and running um, so the next application I started working on was similar to this but it would give me the price of Bitcoin Litecoin and Ethereum so I called that coin request so this is the first one here where I actually put in some some slot types as well so I've got the coin slot type and I've just got giving it some samples there so Ethereum uh, Litecoin and Bitcoin I've also added some synonyms as well so the user can say different um, different different ways of saying the coin and the application will still, still work so if we come into test Start a coin request. Okay, there we go. Please give me the price of Litecoin. So that's returned the price. And then we're just going to start it again and ask it for the price of Bitcoin. Right, so that's gone off and got those prices. It's working very well. I'm just going to take you through the code of this application. So I'm just going to change region. Um, bearing in mind, now, now I have sorted this, but you do want to make sure that you're deploying in the, in the same region anytime unless you have specific reason to. Otherwise, you can end up losing some applications and not knowing where they are. Um, so it's important to set that in your AWS um, configuration. Um, so that the region is always the same. So, so just go, go and click on the Lambda function here. That's just going to load up the index.js. So again, just creating that function up here. Um, but first off, declared a variable um, for ticker. And then just put in a little, um, just a dummy text here, so for ticker name. And then this function here will go off and get the ticker. Um, we're going to get the price for the ticker and then resolve that as bit price, which is right here. So that's the variable. We then go down to the request handler. So we've got here price intent handler. We've got the function. So first off, declaring a variable for coin log, and that is the slot that the user provides the um, the application. So it would be providing the 
the, the name of the coin, which is Litecoin. So that is the coin log. So it logs that request of Litecoin. Then we've got a console.log, um, which will log price request, space, and then coin log. So the name of the coin. I then create a little function to change the name of the coin to the actual ticker. So if coin log equals Bitcoin, change it to the ticker, same for Litecoin and Ethereum. And then we've just logged ticket is space ticker. So ticket is and then ETC or it's ETH dash USD. Then um, we've got the variable here, bit price, which is just going to await the git quote um, function, which is, which is at the top, which we're actually going to get the price. And then we just have console.log price retrieved is the price plus plus the price there. Uh, no, sorry, that's price retrieved plus space and then bit price, which it's going to get from git quote. And then it's going to just go ahead and speak it out. Um, I think the biggest benefit to me writing this application was actually utilizing um, the console.log, as I mentioned in the previous video. So whenever I put a console.log in here throughout this um, function throughout the application, it will log how the price request was working and how how everything was moving throughout the application, which really aided in troubleshooting. So if I just show you that quickly now, if we go into region where that application is working and we go into log groups and the coin request app, and then the latest log group we can see here. So we've the application has received a price request for Litecoin. It's then converted the Litecoin string into LTC USD, which is the ticker. It's then gone off and retrieved the price of 4213. And we can see it then spoke that out to the user. And so the next application um, it's developing on this a bit more. It's essentially just adding um, a Dynamo DB instance to this application. So it logs the requests for the for the user. So every time they make a request for a certain coin, it then logs it into Dynamo DB. I've also just um, added in a read function, which reads it out to the console. Um, this this application is still pretty much being worked on. Um, the next the next step really for it is to read out some of the output, some of the database output to the user, which is what, what I'm working on. So I've added two intents here. So we've got the same intent from the last um, application. So we've got the coin. So what is the price of coin? Give me the price of coin. And then have a database intent, which just says, can you read the, the database or please read database, please list database. So if we go into test now, uh, it's called this something different. Um, I did notice one issue with this. If you give, um, if you if you give your skills the same invocation name, it actually it actually ends up starting the other application. So at the start, I also called this application coin request and then it was sending its code or sending its request to this lambda function rather than the, the new you created one and the fix for that i just started it just use a new a new invocation name so just gonna start this now so um please give me the price of let's do bitcoin Right, so that's gone off and it's got the price of Bitcoin. And then we'll just start here again. And then we'll just execute the other function, which is to read database. Now at the moment, it's just returning a normal string, just reading database results. But what's happening in the background is, is it's actually reading my DynamoDB and then pasting the information into um, the log. So if we go back and I'll show you the code for this. Pop 
portfolio app. Oh yeah, the zip file was, um, sorry, the function's too large, so I'll just have to show you it on here. Just open up the folder. Okay, so it's pretty much refactored from the other applications. So still still using the GDAX API, um, declaring the ticker name variable and, and going off and getting the price and return that to the user. Um, what I've added, added in here is just requiring um, AWS DynamoDB document client, um, which will actually allow it to use DynamoDB commands and access my, data, my database. So it's just got the normal um, application code as before. So we've got speak out bit price and that's speaking out the price to the user. I then log um, just this here, log and request DB. Um, we then have our items here, which we want to log to the DB. So we've got our date, um, got the ticker, um, which is declared up here. And then the price, which is bit price. We've got a table name price requests and then this is the actual function which puts that data into the table and then that gives us an error if there was an error or it just console.logs success and then for the read I've got another intent here so database intent just declaring the variable um, we're just declaring the table name here so the price request table we're then scanning that table and then logging that data into console.log. Uh, so this is still still working on this at the moment. Um, just working on getting this speaking out to the user. So if anyone can give me any tips or point me to any documentation on how I can get this speaking out to the user, that would be great. And I can put this application to bed and, le and move on to my next one. So if I just now go back to the CloudWatch logs for this application, I can show you how it's working. So the Ask Portfolio app and the latest log here. So you can see that price came through as price request Bitcoin. We have ticker BTC USD. It's then giving us the price. It's then so login request the database, and then we've got success. And then it runs through the application again and then we've got reading database we've got success and then we can see here this is the this is the um information for my database so i am i am retrieving it and i'm able to dump it somewhere but it's just maybe iterating through these and getting the ver getting the correct information out of out of these brackets and etc and then reading it back to user in an easy to understand way. So if anyone can help me out with that, point me to some documentation, that would be great. Um, so if we go back now to, so if we go over to our DynamoDB, I can actually show you the information that's been logged in here. So if we go to tables and we go to stock prices, I believe. At price requests. So we can see here we've got the price BTC USD and it's logged that, it's logged the coin and it's logged the date as well. So if we go back to the application we should see that price there. Yes we do. 8646.46 and we can see that just fine. So the next step for me with the Alexa development is this shopping list app here. So with this app, what I'm looking to do is create a shopping list which the user can add um, items to using DynamoDB. We also want them to be able to delete items and then read the whole shopping list back to the user. Um, maybe also utilizing different usernames. So um, a shopping list for one user, and a shopping list for another user and they can read, read those items back through, through the Alexa. Um, 
The other element to this is a front end, which is just going to list the database and all their shopping lists. So for that, I'm probably going to be utilizing S3 to provide them a link to a HTML page with some JavaScript. And that's how far I've got with Alexa on the whole at the moment. So if you guys have any other ideas for applications or, or point me to any resources which can help me go go further with developing Alexa skills and also learning a bit more about Node.js as well. That would be great. Um, so that is the end of this video. Please, please like the video and please subscribe.